catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com. Welcome everyone to this webinar, Friendly Africa Tech Radio and Media Partners um, Tech on Code. This is the last in the series for the year 2023. And wrapping up the year, we're talking about creating a positive workplace security culture. I have with me on stage Samuel Alabi, who would be our producer slash moderator slash everything we need. Um, and Uluwatu Sin Adisa, who is, you know, also um, slash and data analyst at Premly. And I also have here with me Tolu, yes, Tolu Aditui, the Chief Innovation Innovative Officer, that's CIO and co-founder at Premly. And then I have Miracle Chukwidebe, security consultant with Ethnos. Let's start with um, everyone saying hi. Um, that's uh, the speakers. Adebola, beautiful. Thank you for the thumbs up. So, Okwala, how are you doing today? Okay, I, I'm not sure I heard everything completely. Um, I think we need some time to speak again. And Tolu, how are you doing today? Yeah, thank you, Anthony. Um, pretty much good. I'm so excited to be here as well. Beautiful. I'm excited to be having this conversation with you. And Miracle, how's it been? How Let's start with how 2023 has been for all of us in a phrase, in a set of words, in one word, in one sentence. All right. Hi, everyone. How 2023 has been as a whole in terms of work. I mean, you can also share some personal tips with us. I'll start with Miracle. Hi, Samuel. So thank you for having me. Thank you to me. And thank you, Samuel. Um, 2023 has been, in fact, one of the things that um, really blew up this year um, was the use of AI. You know, everyone is doing chat GPT, new things, you know, trying to integrate APIs, learning new things with the whole AI thing like, uh, at this time of, the, of life. You know, you know, internet from 1G to 2G, 3G, 4G, 5 I mean, a lot has happened this year and it's such a great time to be alive. I mean, I'm really happy to be talking about all of this today. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to having a great show with us today. So that's it from me. Back to you, Samuel. Thanks, Miracle. Hi, Tolu. Hi, Samuel. Thanks, Samuel. Uh, pretty much, I think um, 2023 has been a very fantastic year, so to speak. A lot of activities has happened in a year, you know, locally, across the globe as well. There's been several stuff of innovations around the world, um, which now we are beginning to understand the fact that they are here to stay, right? We saw a great transition here from, you know, people talking about Web3 to people now talking, you know, about AI and all. With the advent of product like ChatGPT, who went mainstream, it's been really exhilarating for me personally. Um, also personally, I think there has been a couple of you know wins and losses here and there, but overall, I think I'm I'm also grateful to God to be witnessing the end of the year as well. I'm looking forward to 2024 to being a, a much better year, a greater year as well. Even as I count my wins for 2023. Thank you. All right, thanks, Tolu. Let me have Oku Ola Adebola back on stage. Hi, Adebola, can you speak now? So 2023 has actually, for me, been a pivotal swift or a swift pivotal change from the norm, if I can put it like that. It's been a year of happenings in the tech industry and the pedagogical change that happened in 2023 actually, I think, would set precedence for what would be a mind-blowing um, 2024 or beyond, the advent of people moving from using the normal technologies into heavy dependence on LLMs and the swift change in the cybersecurity space that not even makes us have cybersecurity as a service, which we probably we'll talk about later in this call. All of that plus more has made 2020 really, really interesting. 
either in the positive or negative way but for me i would just say it has been a swift pivotal change from the norm perfect thank you very much and thank you samo for holding forth and i've heard um miracle tolu and adibola yes yes i've heard them share how 2023 went for them personally and i i think we can move on to what a security culture is and the kind of trends that shaped how this culture was perceived and how this culture was built in 2023 i hope this isn't too intense too fast or too early to look and go first and then a miracle and adibola yeah thanks cyber security culture I mean in a very layman terms um just going to try as much as possible not to be too technical as well i think it is the embodiment right of ensuring that an organization or a group or set of people right are able to ensure that they are compliant in a um in a very more standardized way that allows them to mitigate against risk and potential threats right uh it's about security culture is a culture that where everybody within the closed loop of systems are all aware of the risk that could you know that could happen or the endangerment that, that you know that are available within the spectrum and it's a collective effort right uh, i know most people most organizations would like to attribute you no know, security things to cyber security professionals but it's a collective effort right um it, it's a thing that has to be done across board right uh, from that simple um hr personnel to a software engineer in the company to the executive team as well being being aware of the things that might go wrong right within an organization and when we begin to talk about you know you know cyber security culture i think one of the things that that is very important that has been the norm over the years um uh, is is you know is, is training right regardless of whether it is 2023 or it is 2024 it is 2021 uh regardless of the year one of the one of the key things uh that needs to happen when we want to begin to you know you know cultivate like a cyber security culture is education and training where regular you know security training sessions are being conducted awareness are being raised uh, about threats and, and 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 best practices to mitigate against them i think another thing that also you know shapes um cyber security culture in the norm is also having clear policies right you know as much as it's important for us to have education awareness about potential trends and and best practices to put in place it's also very important that as an organization that there are clear policies you know that establish and communicate clear security policies right where employees can typically understand their role uh, you know in maintaining like a very secure a very secure workplace um this is is a very very pretty much important to shape um a culture that the security aware that the security conscious uh, within the organization i think and that is also well very very important regardless of the year that we are it also looking communication right you know there are cases where people you know get frightened about the sac- a certain security thing and they just keep it to themselves Right, that could be communication is one of those things that enforces a, a very clear cyber security culture within organization where employees are able to sort of speak up as to what is happening as to what they've noticed you know reporting security concerns as as it evolves along along the line right i think that's some of the things that uh, typically shape you know cyber security culture among the workforce or among the people right who have, have been together to achieve a set goal and that is also very clearly very very important is also is is access control right and this is not going to go away right so implementing free access policies within organization you know that 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 create access control to limit unauthorized access unauthorized entry and protect sensitive data and one of the things that also think that shapes generally security culture within within like, the workplace and that kit is also very important it's also regular audits right within within an organization uh how often do you conduct regular audits was it was it was the time there was a time frame was the policy that backs using regular audits right how do you conduct periodic security audits to identify vulnerabilities and address them proactively 
because you know the fundamental of, of of security doesn't you know doesn't change it's all about how can i detect risk and how can i mitigate against those risks and when things also go wrong right how can i quickly recover from some of these things and i think when we begin to educate people and train them about you know some of these security you know training sessions and all of those things having clear policies in line uh, having open communication implementing the right access control to ensure that unauthorized assets are being taken care of, then we can begin to see like a trait of an organization or, 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 or a prior startup, right, who are secret and conscious. Hmm. Thank you very much for the points you've noted and the things you have noticed um, in 2023. Information, being well informed, having a an organization where everyone is hands-on and things that have to do with security is really, really important. Miracle, we're defining the terms now. And what would you say, you know, a good security culture in a workplace is? And can all organizations, no matter how big or how small the organization is, can all organizations develop a security culture? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony. And in fact, thank you, Tolu, too, for the very nice background you laid to the entire conversation. Now, as far as security culture goes, I mean, defining the terms, what exactly is culture? Before we even start talking about security culture, what is even culture, right? So the entire security culture speaks to the values, the beliefs, that something would say in my company, and even in the cybersecurity world now, something we call the cyber hygiene, all right? What are the values? What are the beliefs that an organization has when it comes to security, all right? What are the beliefs that we have? You know, an organization is made up of three critical components. And those components are the people, the processes and the technologies. For your people, we're speaking about these cultures. We're speaking about do they know our do's and don'ts? Do we even have a do and don't? That is what our process is now looks at. Do we have policies and procedures, just like what Tolu mentioned? Do we have policies and procedures that guide our interactions within our company? Do we have policies and procedures that guide our interactions with data, customer data? What about our own personal information, our own desktops, our endpoints that we use, our mobile phones, even our, how about physical entry into our physical facility? Are there certain cultures, are there certain values that an organization has established for its people to be able to work with? All right. So that comes to the people part, comes to the processes, and of course the technologies. Like you asked, can every organization have a security culture at the workplace? Of course, the question, the answer is yes. Once that organization has processes, they have technologies, of course, they can imbibe that they need to do. There are lots of laid down policies and procedures that they need to implement from the top management all the way down to the least member of staff. I, I mean, I can't describe that as a certain role that will be called the least member of staff but they, it has to come from top management, all right? That is one thing that we, we, we try to talk when we have engagements with organizations like this. We like to make them understand that whatever culture you want members of staff to imbibe, that culture, that belief, rather that activity, that process has to flow from the top to bottom. If top management does not see the need to buy into a cybersecurity culture, if top management does not see the need to implement certain controls, processes, and policies, it would not work, right? So let me stop for now. I mean, we, we have a lot of conversations to, to have as we proceed, but you know, since we are still setting the basis, we're just setting the background, let me stop here. Every organization can definitely, should definitely have a proper cybersecurity culture, one. And two, when it comes to cybersecurity culture, we must understand that an organization needs to establish these things. There has to be an agreement, a buy-in from top management all the way down. That is the only way these things can actually flow and 
you know, touch every single member of the organization. Of course, management sets matrices for measuring them and the like. So let's let, let me stop here for now and you know hand it back to you, Anthony, for the rest of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miracle. Great points. Great points. Adibola, everyone this year, in fact, from December 2022 to December 2023, AI has been on the lips of everybody. Literally, even people who don't know what AI is or what it's about, AI, just mention any conversation and put AI, conversation has started, conversation starter. At the basis of, you know, these um, new technologies, um, we have data at the basis of everything that has to do with security online um, or anything online is also data and you literally sit on data how do you measure the success of a positive security culture that's in an organization and how do you set the terms or define that you know this organization um, has a great culture with the security of their data or the security of the organization or on the web or on the internet. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Anthony. Um, I believe everyone can hear me. I really like the POV of the previous two speakers and also from Miracle when he mentioned values and beliefs in talking about security culture. I would like to extend that definition by also putting in attitudes and behaviors of either employees or management. Now, implementation of decisions can actually come top down if you're running a centralized company, but I would like to put it to you that security culture should run bottom up right from, like they say, the metaphorical least person in the company up to the, the top of the hierarchy, right? And when you talk about AI and how people actually perceive AI with, with the discussion. They actually have been a menace. It's, it's, it's been something that I can call a global menace. And by menace, it might be good or bad. So AI and ML could potentially, act on its own, pose a cybersecurity threat as they can be used by attackers here yeah, to, to automate or scale their malicious activity. Now, from the perspective of a data scientist, I'd like to point it out that one one of the things that can be done is to use the data either proactively or reactively from a company to analyze risk for that company in their cybersecurity space. For instance, um, let's say you are running a financial company and a fraud has happened. Now, you can either be proactive or reactive. So I can't stress enough the importance of leveraging data for security awareness. Now, by analyzing past security incidents, it is possible for us to identify patterns that can help us to predict the future threats and proactively work against it. Now, this proactive approach not only enhances our security posture, either as an SME, a big company, but also it enables us to tailor our defense mechanism more effectively so you know what you're looking forward to if you're running like uh, a classification algorithm on the data you definitely know oh this is the kind of thread that happened when this kind of thing happens so for you to like mitigate against that kind of threats it's easy based on 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 the analysis that you have done also for instance if my organization as a different data driven organization if we have a data driven analysis that has helped us to preempt a significant phishing attack, then it's possible to probably populate the list of our phishing emails, like, okay, this set of emails or this set of uh, email addresses are coming in, that are coming in are going to be fishy. That helps protect your your employee and even your company um, as a whole. And to wrap this intro up, I think people think it's e- enough to just keep quiet and just allow the the security team of a company implement security. Now, I do say one thing, the computer is as dumb as the person using it. So even if you think the computer is smart enough, the computer would not report incidences for you. If you, for instance, have clicked uh, an email that you know you have been phished, rather than just keep it and think probably I'm going to like keep this to myself till the grave, cultivate this culture of reporting it and 
that's like the least you can do and there are a lot of things you can also do but i'll just point out that particular one for the introduction sake and that's why i said i would like to extend it beyond just uh, belief and probably value to taking it to attitude and behavior thank you interesting points made there now this conversation is open to everyone um who in, you know including everyone who's listening um you can click on the icon um raise your hand and then come up to the stage to share a comment on what the security culture in your workplace is what it looks like what it um would be and also a comment on something that's been said by um one of the speakers um either Tolu Miracle or um Adebola or even myself you know something that's been shared by myself now let's go to the challenges that we faced in 2023 now if we make a list of say top 3 in terms of the uh, security culture at workplaces what would make your top 3 miracle Tulu and then Adibola miracle. Oh, wow. Okay, thank you. Thank you again, Tony. So, one of the first things, uh, one of the very top challenges and that would always remain a challenge is lack of awareness. All right. That remains top for me. We've seen several organizations they have the best process. You know, like I said something before, we have three core pillars which are the people the processes and the technologies you may have the very best of technologies an organization can invest so much in implementing security measures within their system within their infrastructure they can also have very fantastic policies that guides people's work they may have very fantastic procedures that are well documented and even communicated to all members of staff but you will find out that people remains like in security we say people remain the weakest links humans are always the weakest links you would see that someone like i was carrying out an audit not too long ago and um, I, i was auditing a database and i i looked at their documentation they said they have a data retention period of um, 7 years on that particular database and then i asked the database administrator I said okay so tell me uh, what's your retention period for this particular database oh, the guy said eh, well we purge the database anytime it is full anytime we notice some resources issues we just purge all right now that does not show alignment between documented policies and procedures and operations there is no alignment and that is a problem so i had to bring it up to the guy that hey man that's 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 not true that's not what you have documented when they say ah i didn't know we had this document though i've not seen this procedure before this is the first time that i'm seeing this are you serious and this is a document that has been communicated published within the organization and you have also attested to have read and understood the requirements of that particular document all right so we see this happen virtually everywhere that is one top challenge lack of awareness so there has to be measures and metrics for measuring awareness within the organization people must begin to take more responsibility when it comes to getting aware with the organization's responsibility and that is what i said before i said it must come from top to bottom um, i um, i think that was um tolu i think that was tolu or yeah okunola i i don't remember when he spoke he said it should flow from the bottom up well that's another point of view but i actually feel and believe from experience and from you know records that it should flow from top to bottom management must drive the entire security and the workplace culture all the way from the top to the bottom and they must pro- set up metrics for monitoring and evaluating how these things are going on so that that's for awareness which i said would always top my list another thing now comes to i would say is um, maybe competence competence a lot of there are several trends in the tech world and organizations and businesses people need to flow with the trend you need to be aware of new ways new thing new 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 procedures or new strategies of doing things 
and you know as your awareness is increasing you must also try to learn to flow with the tide and of course do it in a well secured manner and that is why awareness must also come in place you must also make sure that people are very much aware the IT teams within the organizations, compliance teams, HR management teams has to be aware and make sure people are getting trained and retrained. We must have a culture that instills cyber security and security measures in the day-to-day -day business as usual processes of every individual within the organization. Otherwise, people who are considered cyber criminals would not waste their time attacking your infrastructure. They wouldn't even waste time doing some, you know, attacking your firewalls, raising, using large computing resources. No, they will go for your people who are the weakest links. They will go for the low hanging fruits. Take advantage of people's ignorance, latch on it and gain access to your vaults, gain access to your core critical infrastructure and will cause major damn major issues to your organization so for me like i said awareness is one major challenge to competence people doing work within the infrastructure within handling customer data people handling um core critical areas of our businesses so a lot of them do not have the competence to those who are competent have either jackpot, you know, they, 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 you know, the whole brain drain thing that is happening all the way from 2022, 2023, we've seen it happen and it keeps happening. Good hands are leaving, right? And then creating a loophole, creating a vacuum in different businesses. So that is also one thing I would like to consider as one of the challenge. I think that would be it from me at this point. So back to you, Tony. Thank you very much. If you're just joining us, we're wrapping up the year. And I think even as we get towards the end of the year, a lot of people are desperate and moves are, you know, made. Um, so how do we create a positive workplace security culture, even while we're like, in quotes, holidaying for those who actually holiday? That's what we're discussing. And we, the major discussants, um, aside from, you know, you um, listening, there's a lead research and data analyst at Premly, Adibola Orogun, um, Tolu Aditui, the chief innovative officer and co-founder at Premly, and Miracle Chukudebe, security consultant at Ethnos. Now, Tolu, what challenges did the security culture in workplaces face in 2023? And while you were you know, doing your introduction, you mentioned something about communication, proper communication. Um, how exactly can organizations ensure that this communication is done well and it is impactful communication? about the culture of um, security in any and every workplace. Um, thanks, thanks, Anthony. Um, I think I'm going to start with one of the top challenges that I think um, is a major concern. Uh, and I think everybody will also agree with me on that. I think it still boils down to human error, right? I think it's, it's the biggest and the biggest challenge that we have, right? So many employees have fall victim of phishing attacks, um, again, you know that there are some things that, that are just, even though there are mitigations that have been in place, things like two-factor authentication and all of those things. Uh, but I still think human error is the greatest and the biggest threat that we have. You can have everything in place and, and yet people, people, I know, culture, the mindset of the people have not changed, have not really evolved. I've seen cases whereby you are trying to, you know, implement like a new uh, security procedure and people just know. You know, they just think that it's just too cumbersome for them to do, to go through, right? Uh, because, you know, sometimes when you are trying to add like an additional layer of security, uh, sometimes it might, it might impact, you know, user experience. Uh, people might just think that this is just too much. Why do I need to install XYZ on my PC? Why do I need to do this on my PC? XYZ and blah, blah, blah. Because people are just so comfortable with the normal, you know, with the norm, right? Um, and so you would sometimes when you are trying to implement a new, a new policy across the organization, you realize the fact that you need to give it like a time frame, right? Because many people will struggle with that change. Uh, many people will struggle to, you know, abide with the new principles that are trying, you are trying to put in place, you are trying to set up, right? Uh, people would, you know, take time, take months before they even abide, you know, I implement those new policies, maybe on their devices, um, so to speak. So I think it's, 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 it's the biggest and biggest thing. 
I'm not just going to talk about the challenges alone, but I'm also going to talk about things I think that we can do, right? Uh, I, I think for that, right, uh, like like I've mentioned from the very onset at the beginning of, of this of this show, uh, I think one of the things that we can continue to do, right, in that regard is to continually, you know, educate people that these things that we're trying to put the blaze out for the security reasons, right, they're not just because we are trying to burden people with, with, with stuff, but we are just trying to ensure that uh, they are the right things and this will save us a lot, right? Uh, one of the things that we've also done right here now is that we even do uh, just to mitigate the cases sometimes is, is to is to sometimes you know mimic these kind of situations right where we just tend to set up something that looks like a phishing attack for instance right and see how people fed for it right and and when when we cast some of those things we, we now say hey guy you, you know this could be real right uh, and if it was real it could have cost us x you know amount of money it could have cost us loss of data and the likes and i think some of those things has you know has has worked in time past just to be able to ensure that the human error part is being reduced and people are much more aware uh about what it is that it can cost them i think the the other challenge that i've also seen right uh, which which might not be cable to everybody is is also cultural variations, right? Especially if you're a company who have like a global presence, right? Who is not just resi- you know resident in just one country, right? For instance, regulations across countries are different, right? And and you may, you may need to you know to keep up with all of these changes across different countries, across different continents. And you need to align with cybersecurity practices with those different cultural forms, regulation and expectation and, and what, what have you. Uh, I think cultural variation is the second one that I would, I would, I would, I would mention that has been like uh, a, a biggest challenge uh, in 2020. And I think the third one, right, is the evolving threat landscape. So these, these, these attackers are not sleeping, right? As you are trying to improve on your process, as you are trying to uh, mitigate against risk, they're also finding new ways in which they can also, you know, sort of just sort of attack you. I, th- I think it was Adebola that mentioned how, you know, people now can even use AI to even game some things, right? Uh, they've, they've turned it into a tool that can make them advance the way they even attack organization these days. Uh, so as, as as trends are coming in, as new tools are coming in, uh, some of these guys are also, you know, they're also capitalizing on, on, on some of these new tools to be able to, you know, you know, launch attack on organization and all of those things. So keeping up with this with this threat and adjusting uh, security measures accordingly can be a, a very significant, significant challenge. Like I mentioned initially, when I said communication is very important, internal communication is very important. Uh, I think what I was just trying to say is, you know, sometimes when when things happen, right, uh, because of the lack of awareness that people have, they tend to keep it to themselves, or because of the fear of, oh, what if I what if I report that so 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 thing just happened to me, or I mistakenly enter something that is malicious, right? If I if I say this, how are they going to perceive me? I think we need to come to a level where. You know, reporting things like that does not have to be have to be that hard, right? Uh, people people might be thinking about punishment that might come afterwards, but I think it's important that we have a culture where there is openness, where people can literally just you know sort of you know share and communicate exactly what they've seen or what they've noticed, so that people can you know actually take you know proactive measures against some of these things. I think I'm just going to stop here and allow the conversation to go because I think we still have more, much more to, to discuss. Preach it, preach it. That's what I'm going to say. Preach it. The last point, exactly. Preach it. Let's carry it on ahead like Gala. Like, really, really important, right? Having that, that's like, okay, one thing noted now, that is a behavior and attitude like we've all talked about here. That should be ingrained in a culture of every organization. Really, really important. The openness the communication coming forward when you see something when you see something say something now uh debola they've mentioned you know your name like twice already so i just have to what challenges did you notice and how much of a menace or you know will you know was ai in 2023 in relation to the discussion we're having about um, you know, workplace security. Now, before you before you continue, I want to say again that if at any point in time, you know, you feel the need as you're listening, you know, to come up the stage, please just um, click on the hand uh, icon, raise your hand to come up the stage, and you can be a part of the conversation. Thank you. Adibola, I can. 
All right. Thank you so much. Uh, the points from, from the other two speakers are wow. They are they are mind blowing. The challenge I saying, or the challenges that mitigate against security culture in the company is wide, especially with the advent of AI, ML, or what have you, and also the gross distinction between hybrid work, on-site work, and remote work. Now, I would like to point out that one of the challenges also to this is poor cyber hygiene. Imagine, for instance, you work in a company where your codes are supposed to be sensitive. Your employers gave you a, a machine that has their own installed policies, which probably protects your codes from third-party attackers or has a very good firewall. But you feel, hey, you want to go on vacation, and since it's a remote work, nobody's going to know if you're on vacation or not, and you are using your own personal PC to implement company's code, then you expose your your, your company's code to, to 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 third parties. This can be a PC you use to watch movies or you download torrents and it. You have clicked yes to a million and one cookies, which has opened back doors in your in your PC. I mean on your PC, and you are just there coding it out and thinking, hey, I'm doing a good work, only for me to like, maybe I will just transfer it to like a USB flash drive and I'll put it on my company's um, laptop. You see, this this poor cyber hygiene has been a, a very, very pivotal. Because you, you, you can only be as smart as the device you use and how you use the device. And also, we have cloud vulnerabilities that has gone on. Like, a lot of people think the fact that their company is on cloud, it makes it safe. It's not as safe as you or as all of us think. A conversation in AWS that I attended yesterday, um, um, I think a convention, I think somewhere in the United States, I attended it remotely. They gave a whole lot of security challenges to this cloud thing. And on that thing, before I mention some of the things we can use or we can practice to make it mitigate this this ominous. And that thing is mobile device vulnerability. Now, we are talking about security in the workplace as though it's just cybersecurity alone. I think Miracle mentioned something about humans. I think Tolu also reiterated it about human being the weakest link. So the fact that you use a mobile phone can actually put your company in so much trouble. Now, some of us, a lot of our friends know our passwords and you feel, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's safe. But you have teams on your phone with sensitive company information on your teams. Now, if I work for company A and you work for company B and I want to get inside information about your company and I have access to your phone, I can kill your company with a click. So these are like the low angry fruit of issues that happen in the cyberspace that people might think, hey, it's nothing, but it's really, it's really a big deal. Now, let's go on to those things that I think can be done. Now, one of the things that can be done is to ensure that we reduce cyber espionage. Now, who are those people that have access to sensitive data? Who is assessing what and how are they assessing it? That that particular thing also should uh, should be should be should be like reduced. You know, if if your company has sensitive data and you have like a lot of employees accessing that, the more the merrier they stay with data. But with sensitive data, the more the riskier it becomes extremely risky for your company. And also, now, I would like us to understand that there is something called CAAS, which is Cybercrime as a Service. So there are some people who are offering cybercrime as a service, right? So CAAS is said to be a dangerous business model, but which cyber criminals, they offer hacking services and tools on the dark web for anyone to launch to attack a business. And unknowingly to someone like me, or yeah, not me, but anyone, you might just think, hey, they are, and they will not attach these things to like the open web. It's a dark web. And you might just think, hey, um, Game of Thrones season seven and eight is out, and you feel like you want to download it, and you just you just go there on the torrent, and they probably just add this 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 files to some of the things you're downloading. You won't even know. It might just be as infinitesimal as just. Uh, maybe probably two bytes. Two bytes is enough to to perpetrate any evil. So I think these kind of breaches um, also are things that, that that should be mitigated. The last one I would like to talk about, which I think can um, help to mitigate this, 
also is employees resistance to change now some people don't even like change you tell them this is what is needed to be done and they tell you it's it's affecting them personally and i've even seen some people like complain to me while i was still a lecturer that why, why would they even implement something like this so the the employee resistance to change they're not even being aware enough and even some some leadership of some or some management of some companies not even enforcing this enough i think it's is the menace and i i deviated from you asking ai because ai is another big topic entirely I, if we started on this conversation we won't end it but i would just like to let you know that ai is the good evil that's the quote I'll put. AI is the good evil. And if there is still time, I will expand shit on that. Thank you. Okay. So that would be what um, you'd be um, expatiating on um, when next you have the mic, because I think it's really important as we wrap up this year where AI has been a buzzword, um, that we um, actually get um, some kind of insight um, into how it has impacted us in this year. Tolu? Yeah, I'm done. I'm with you. Flexi push the limits of flexi. You know, he literally like. Yeah. I, I'm very now. How can we balance? How can we balance ensuring security with providing flexibility and on the morale of employees? Um, so of cyber security or because of cyber security. Oh, okay. All right. I think one of one of the things that we can do to bring in flexibility, right, uh, is to implement a, a, a role based access, right, access control. So, for instance, in an organization that, that levels of information or level of data uh, that certain people are preview to, right? If we can implement this, you know, a, you know, a robust system whereby for certain set of people, you might not need to bother them with so much things to do, number one, because they do not even in the first place have access to that kind of level of data, um, right? So, it means that as the roles increased, um, the level of security that needs to be tightened now also increases as well. Uh, so if take, for instance, uh, what a, a product marketing organization, right, the level of security stuff that needs to be implemented for, for, for a product marketer might be different from what an engineer or an infrastructure engineer, for instance, needs to have, right? Uh, there are certain things that might not be so important to a product marketer, but you can't you can't ignore them when you're dealing with an infrastructure engineer who have access to all your infrastructures and the likes. So we can begin to create a system that takes that kind of role-based access control into consideration, ensuring that depending on the kind of access that you have or the kind depending on the kind of information that you are privy to, we determine the robustness of how the, the of how your your security intelligence so to so to speak right would be the other thing that i also think that we can also do which which i think we've, we spoke about over and over and over and over and over again right is to is to train people honestly speaking it's it, i think it's still one of the most important things that because when people begin to understand the importance of a thing then it, it doesn't become too much of a burden to them because the reason why you want to create flexibility in the first place is because you are trying to ensure that it does not impact their user experience. But as you begin to become aware of a thing, as they have more knowledge about something, they no longer see it as a burden or as a threat for them to do. They see that something that is just a norm. Uh, because, you know, norm by definition is just what everybody thinks is normal. Right, and norm can have different, 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 different definitions to different people. But as people begin to increase in knowledge, right, and education, some certain things just becomes a norm, and it's no longer a threat to them in one way or the other. So I think if you begin to implement some of these things, role-based access control, and you know, a bit of employment, employee training to to ensure the fact that people have like updated information to ensure that these things are norm, it, it becomes easier. You know, for us to be, be able to you know have flexibility in things. All right, thanks, Tolu. We'll be rounding up off shortly. But before we round up, I'll just ask a couple of questions from Adebola, for Adebola and Miracle specifically. All right, Adebola, you spoke about you spoke ex- extensively about um, AI, and um, I just want to also use this as an opportunity for you to explore more in the next uh, two minutes. You, you said something around AI being a necessary evil or good evil. Uh, can you just elaborate more on that as in respect to, uh, you know, building a security culture? 
All right, thank you. Um, so the good about AI is the fact that what you need, so to, to just like be very brief about it, what you need 10 hours to do, you can achieve it within an hour using AI. It's, it has cut across different forums of life, different, different facets of life, from enhancing data analysis as uh, a data scientist, or even those that are in the health sector, they, they can tell you that it has enhanced the healthcare. We have different innovations that are going on with AI. Those are the beneficial impacts of AI. But the evil about it is the issue of deepfakes. This deepfake thing is is crazy. Now, or uh, I think on my LinkedIn, I posted a synthetic video some days ago where you can now do real-time image regeneration. So if I want to be Samuel Alabi and I want it to be a video, all I need to do is to fire that software behind my camera. So I just fire up the software and I put myself on the camera and my face changes instantly to Samuel Alabi. Now that has a lot of risk. So imagine if I am to communicate with my CEO or if a cyber, secu- if a, a cyber criminal is to communicate with the CEO, like it's me using the deep fix. I mean, my CEO would never know because now it can generate synthetic voices that look exactly like the host. And also with the advent of synthetic deep fake videos, you definitely know that there, there is if I, if I, a lot more to do to like curb deep fakes if we are even going to like ensure good um, security in, in workplaces going forward. Another problem also is the control problem. Now, as AI systems become more advanced, right, to ensure that they align with human values and intentions become even more difficult, right? And the fact that they can most of them can be controlled safely, but some can't be. Now, to control them is another ball game entirely. Now, the control of AI is now a growing concern about among AI researchers and people that implement ethics in the company. I'll, I'll, I appreciate my CEO for having this conversation some days ago or some weeks ago. Even I think it was brought up by the CIO who is on this call. How do you use ChatGPT? Now, those are the kind of conversations you should have with your community, your company, your organization. Security and thought-provoking questions that can enhance policies around the use of AI. Because trust me, if unchecked, AI can mar any company. It can break any company. So lastly on that is the loss of privacy. Now, AI's ability to analyze data, right, in an organization or anywhere, can also lead to invasion of privacy. So the fact that it can analyze data for you Uh, I think one of our engineers was saying, if you are implementing, for instance, OpenAI uh, API on your machine, just be sure they have access to it. Yes, they have access to that kind of data. Now, imagine if you're analyzing your company's data using AI or any LLM. Just be sure that that particular data you have uploaded has become third-party data already. Now, if that data is sensitive, you have just put your company at risk. So there are a lot of evil attached to this, and that's why I call it the good evil. We can't run away from it, but as a company, as an organization, it is imperant and really, really important that we build policies around the use of AI in any organization or any um, company. Thank you. Thanks, Adebola. That's um, quite a lot to take in. So wrapping up, Miracle, I think it would just be the same question. As we wrap up the year 2023, what you know, key takeaways, actionable insights you know, should organizations, big or small, be focusing on to ensure that they enhance and improve the security culture in the future, in the new year, in the coming years? All right. Thank you, Anthony. So what can organizations do when it comes to enhancing their cyber security measures? Now, like I said from the beginning, it comes from your policies, comes from your procedures, comes from management doing so much. Management has to have their buy-in in the entire cyber security culture. Just like the last speaker said, 
there has to be policies that guide the usage of so many things. Organizations right now implementing different cyber security frameworks and information security frameworks already know that they must implement policies and procedures. They must have a mobile mobile security policy, they must have a remote working policy, and several other policies. I'm raising the motion that in the next revisions of some of these information security frameworks, there should be a use of artificial intelligence policy. Just like the last speaker said, a lot of personal information, companies' proprietary data, corporate intellectual property and, and information have been uploaded up to um, the, the, the different AI chatbots. And unfortunately, people don't understand the implications. You are opening several back doors, you are feeding the, the database of that AI, you're feeding it with big data, feeding it with more, more, more data to analyze and process and take decisions. So people need to be aware of some of this, and that's why there has to be a guideline for implementing. AI has definitely come to say it has come to stay. All we can do is to protect ourselves. While we have the chat GPT, we also have warm GPT. Just like one of the speakers said, we now have cybercrime as a service. So while good guys are innovating and providing us good things to enhance our work, to bad guys are also innovating, coming up with new ways of of carrying out crimes, cyber crimes. And the best way we can arm ourselves as an organization is to have our people aware. We must have technologies, we must have processes, we must have policies that protect us as individuals and it must flow all the way to the least member of staff, even our security guys, our janitors, they must be aware. Security has to be entrenched into their business as usual processes. Security has to be a part of what they do. In fact, it has to be included in people's KPIs for them to actually take them quite seriously. So implementation of different measures, both policies, procedures, technologies, awareness, is not something that should be kept as an afterthought. Security has to be implemented and preached all the way through our work life cycle. From the day you join our organization, from your onboarding, you must be aware of our our information security policies. You must be aware of our mobile security policy. You must be aware of our remote working policy. You must be aware of all our policies. You must read and understand all the requirements of these policies. You must attest to have read and understood them, and you must abide by the provisions of such policies and procedures. I think organizations should take more seriously. If you have to hire more people to be able to police, to stand as a force as of hope some of these policies, please do it. Because the world, I know that 2024, there's lots of predictions already coming up, cyber security predictions and trends to look out for for 2024. There are lots of them. And to be very frank, there are good ones, but a good number of them are not looking good. And the only way we can arm ourselves as business people, as organizations, is to be aware and take proactive measures to protect our members of staff, protect our infrastructure, protect our assets that we have as a a business. And one of the key ways to do it is increasing employee awareness. Make it a continuous process. Not because you want to pass certain compliance audits, but because you understand the need, you understand the intricacies in the intricacies in it, you understand everything that has to do with it, and then you are making conscious effort to ensure that people are aware and are also taking proactive measures in protecting not just themselves, but the organization which we all treasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miracle Chukwudebe, a security consultant at Ethnos. And all the good we've had today on this particular episode of um, our monthly webinar, from developing a good cyber hygiene to knowing that, you know, the cloud has security challenges for those who put their trust in the cloud solely, to ensuring that we work against cyber espionage, um, to thinking about cultural variation and how that has, um, you know, a part to play um, in the security 
of um, our work, our workplaces, our work tools, um, to competence and people and awareness, building an informed personnel um, to knowing what uh, the threat landscape is uh, and knowing that it's also evolving. Thank you so much to Adebola Orogun, the lead researcher and data analyst at Premly, and thank you to Tolu Aditui, the chief innovation officer and co-founder at Premly. As we wrap up the year for Christians, it's going to be, you know, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. To non-Christians, it's all, oh, you know, we're grateful we're at the end of another calendar year and we're beginning a new calendar year. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you again in January. Yes, uh, the Premly and Africa Tech Radio webinar um, on LinkedIn continues in January. Fourth Thursday, most likely, because um, we have these webinars um, every fourth Thursday. December is different, so that's why we're having it um, today. Um, but we'll see you again on the fourth Thursday and we'll make an announcement, big announcement on what we're going to be talking about. Um, so just stay glued to the social media platforms of Premly and Africa Tech Radio when we make the big announcement. Thank you. Say thank you. Um, Adebola, Miracle and Tolu, just uh, you can unmute your mic and say thank you to everyone once more. Thank you, everyone, for having us. Thank you, Anthony, and Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really great to connect with you guys and speak on this platform. Do have a very wonderful Christmas and New Year celebration. Thank you, everyone. I had an amazing time. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. Beautiful. To all those who joined and left, to all those who are currently still here, Olamide, Rutimi, Mayowa, Kende, um, Godfrey, Mercy, Godfrey, I'm not sure why Godfrey's laughing, Mercy, um, Elizabeth, Michael, Tomiwa, to, um, Tusi, and Samo, who um, held the fort while my internet was misbehaving. And thank you to myself, Anthony, for moderating this particular session. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Um, let's have a wonderful time ahead. Dinnery. Thanks for listening and don't forget to catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com.